Memorial Day is more than a day off from work. It's a day to reflect on what others sacrifice in order to make our country strong. And what better way to honor those who serve than by showcasing the national pastime. Today, we are proud to present the orange and black, paying tribute to the red, white, and blue. It's Memorial Day Baseball, and it's all coming up next. Another afternoon baseball on this Memorial Day. This is game one of a three game series. Nationals and Giants. Welcome to NBC Sports Bay Area powered by Xfinity. Hi again, everybody. I'm Dwayne Kuyper. Alongside me is Mike Kruko. Well, what the Giants have really been able to do lately is they've been getting terrific starting pitching. Now, they're going to need it in this series because the Nationals are pretty good offensively. Well the Nationals are the best in the National League offensively both in team batting average and in run scores which is more important. So the Giants are going to get tested. Well they are also a team that is playing seven and two baseball in their last nine games here at AT and T and their starting staff ERA is just a little over two. So uh, you got a good strong confident rotation going against a good strong confident offense. Let's see what happens. Should be fun today here at the ballpark. It seems like it always is. All right. When we come back, we will have. Hey, that's pretty good. The lineups and the. I like that. And the first pitch right after this. On NBC Sports Bay Area is brought to you by Southwest. Yes to low fares with nothing to hide. That's transparency. By State Farm. Combine auto and renters and see how much you can save. Talk to an agent today. And by the 2017 Jeep Cherokee with an EPA estimated 30 highway miles per gallon. On this Memorial Day on the field when the Giants took the field. There were military families from all branches that 
joined each player at their position, visited, got some autographs. The Nards fans still holding a seminar on center field. And uh, Buster Posey doing his duties before he warms up Matt Moore. And we're just about ready for the first pitch of this ball game between the Giants and the Nationals. Our game time weather is presented by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. Get to the beach. The admission free boardwalk is open daily. 61 degrees here at the yard. It's a little chilly. Winds are brisk. Humidity at 74 percent and it is overcast. Dusty Baker's lineup. And it's brought to you by Southwest Airlines. It'll be Turner Worth and then Bryce Harper. And uh, Harper, yep, yeah, he's having a good year. Zimmerman's having a great year. So is Murphy. Rendon. And then it'll be Matt Wieters, followed by Michael Taylor, and then the pitcher Tanner Roark. On the hill today for the Giants will be the left hander, Matt Moore, 6'3, 210 pounder. Moore in his sixth year at the big league level. He is 27 years of age. He has done it 10 starts. Two and five with a 5'28 ERA, 49 strikeouts in 58 innings. You're going to see a little bit 90s fastball. He will four and two seam, more fours than twos. He will throw a cutter off that fastball. You can see the fastball and the cutter. 71% of the time he's going to come at you with hard stuff. He's also got a good curveball and changeup, and he will throw those. And if one of those gets hot, he will ride it hard. In one start against the Nationals, he has no record with an ERA of 3.60. Let's take a look at the defense behind Matt Moore today, starting in the Giants outfield from left to right. It'll be Williamson, Span, and Ruggiano. Good arms on the corner. Crawford, Arroyo. They're on the left side of the infield. Panic and Bell on the right side. Buster Posey. He'll be in the squad, put down the signs. So here's Trey Turner, and the first pitch of the ball game is on its way, and it's bunted foul. So we get started oh, a couple minutes late. We get started at 107. So was Trey Turner thinking about that coming to the ballpark today? Yep, I think he thought about it all day. Belt off the line at first, and the 0-1 delivery to Turner. That is a big league changeup, and I don't think Matt Moore could throw that any better. Good to get a feel of that pitch early, and he just did. On deck is Worth. Breaks his bat. Rolls it to Crawford. Crawford to Belt. Turner can fly. One out. A couple of our favorites, and uh, we've had a chance to cover these two guys now for a long time. Dusty Baker back in the Bay Area. Yeah, Bruce Bochy. Respected all around baseball for what they've done as players and as managers. So here's Worth hitting it. 274 and he takes inside for a ball home plate umpire is Brian Gorman he's the vet Mike DeMiro Trip Gibson and Dan Asanya worth pops one up span broke back so this is going to be up to Ruggiano and Ruggiano doing the pop up dance puts it away. It's hard to imagine that Bruce Bochy currently now is, was, is here longer than Dusty was. This is the 11th year for Bruce Bochy. Dusty Baker here with 10, 10 seasons as the skipper of the Giants. You saw him there with Chris Spire. 11th year. Wow, it's when you're having fun. Here's Harper. Harper, 337, 15 home runs, 40. One runs batted in and he hooks one foul down the right field line and out of play. Right off the end of the bat. You mentioned Brian Gorman, the plate umpire. I, I think he's got a good strike zone. It's steady. You do get a little more width on the outside corner with right handed hitters than you do with lefties. And he will call some high strikes at the belt. Harper's had two lifetime at bats against Moore. And there's a breaking ball for a strike. Tell you what, I, I think in the last month, I don't think Matt Moore has opened up a game where he's had a feel the change up in the curveball very early on in this game. He's shown that he's got a feel of those two pitches. That's a good sign. Yeah. 
and the 0 2. He's out of play. Came back with a 92 mile an hour fastball. Yeah, a little bit too much of the strike zone with that fastball. Bryce Harper is not the guy that you want to make mistakes at the belt out over the middle plate with. Not with his power. 15 home runs, 41 RBIs. He'll make you pay for mistakes. 0 and 2 to Harper. Down low. See Ryan Zimmerman on deck. Nationals 30 and 19. On the ground to Belt. Belt has it. Matt Moore beats Harper to the bag, and that ends the inning. Two ground balls and a pop up. Span, Panic, and Belt coming up. Lineup brought to you by Southwest Airlines. No Nunez. It'll be Span, Panic, and Belt. Buster Posey, pretty good numbers against Tanner Roark. It'll be Crawford, Ruggiano, and Christian Arroyo back in the lineup. Mac Williamson will hit eighth, and Matt Moore will hit ninth. On the mound today for the Washington Nationals will be the big right hander, Tanner Roark. He's 6'2, 235 pounds. In his fourth year at the big league level, he's 30 years old. This is what he has done in 10 starts 4 and 2. With a 4-3-2 ERA, and what sets him apart? You look at the strikeouts, 50 and 58 innings. That's really a good ratio uh, when you're averaging just about eight strikeouts per nine innings for a sinker ball, and that's what you're going to see with him. He's got a low 90 sink, curveball, slider, and a changeup. He likes to ride that fastball a lot. You'll see it just about 60 percent of the time. When he's on, you'll see a lot of ground balls. Lifetime against the Giants, five and one, and a strike to Denard Span. The one was the playoff game where Belt hit the home run to beat him. What in the 17th? I think it was the 17th. I kind of lost track 18th? after. I think it may have been 18. Was it? I don't know. I lose track after 13. I know we were numb. Span was two for 11. And he takes a bit high, two for 11 against the Braves. Panic on deck. Roark throwing to Matt Wieters. One and two. That's the side of the plate that is the key for Tanner Roark to be able to go front door with that sinker. And that has been one of the inconsistencies he's had trying to command that sinker. When he's able to go both corners with that sinker, he's tough. As tough as anybody in the rotation, and they have a very strong rotation. Let's take a look at the national defense playing behind Roark today, starting in the outfield from left to right. It'll be Worth, Taylor, and Harper. Great arms across the board. They all have have good assist arms. Turner, 
Red Doan on the left side, Murphy and Zimmerman on the right side, and uh, Matt Wieters, he'll be in the squad, put down the signs. Here's the one two to Span. And Span swings and misses, and he's going to reach. No, nope, they're going to call him out. Why did they call him out? Bruce Bochy's one of the same thing. I think it may have hit his foot. Yes. Once it hits a foot, it's a dead ball. So Span has struck out. Wieters pointed immediately to it. Gorman was right there saying, You're right, it did hit the foot. It's funny, we were talking about that at lunch today. Here's Panic hitting 244, two home runs, 14 driven in. And he takes wide one ball and no strikes. Belt to follow. Swinging a foul. It's to the backstop. I think if you're hit left handed against Roark you, you really have to think hard stuff. And as you mentioned he throws that fastball 60 percent of the time and think the opposite way. If you try and pull the outside fastball with movement running away from you as a left handed hitter likewise you're going to hit likely you're going to hit a ground ball to the right side. Popped up out to left field for worth. Two outs. All right time now for our Jeep drive the game we go back to the 2014 NLDS game two and Brandon Bell hit a home run off of Tanner Roark in the top of the 18th inning. Bell was 0 for 6 going into that at bat. And that lit the Giants dugout up, and we could hear screaming in Washington from San Francisco. So Belt takes high, hitting 238, 10 home runs, 22 driven in. Belt in that series against the Atlanta Braves went one for nine, and the one hit was a home run. Buster Posey to follow and belt takes low. The Nationals are coming off a three game series against the Padres. They won the first two games Friday and Saturday but yesterday the Padres beat him five three. They got started a little late because of a rain delay. There's a strike to belt and consequently that in a game that took a little while they didn't land in San Francisco till about one o'clock in the morning. Bell takes another strike. Buster Posey chalking up. Thinking about sinkers. Overshift is on, and Belt strikes out, and that'll end the inning. After one, nothing, nothing.
Park and the Giants have a lot of special surprises in store on this very special Memorial Day baseball game, one of which Barry Zito, former San Francisco Giant, was a guest earlier before the game and performed two of his brand new songs from his album, No Secrets. I spoke to him and he said it was so great to come back here. This is the first time, guys, he has been back to AT&T Park for a game. He said he has a very close connection with the team and obviously he has a close connection with the military as well. He began a nonprofit organization, Strikeouts for Troops, which helped people in the military for years. He also said he was just as nervous playing music as he was when he would pitch, which was a good thing. Guys? It indeed was. As this is hammered to left. On the move is Williamson, and it is gone, and it's one nothing. That's Zimmerman's 14th of the year. And his 40th RBI. And one thing about Zimmerman, he's got a flat swing, and up above the belt, he is lethal. He just not missing. And watch the location. Out over the plate, and man, that is all he's got. Big high leg pick, kick, a lot of moving parts, but that foot drops down, and all of a sudden, here comes the backside right through the bat head. And you knew off the crack of the bat that this was not coming back. So here's Murphy, and Murphy takes wide, hitting 315. Nine home runs, 33 runs batted in. And he takes wide again. On deck is Anthony Rendon. A piece to Santangelo, the color analyst for the Nationals broadcast team, is talking about Daniel Murphy. He says he likes to lift everything. He wants to hit the ball in the air. There's a strike. And FP asked him, well, why? He says, well, there's four guys in the infield, and there's only three in the outfield. Why would I want to hit the ball on the ground? There's actually five guys on the infield. Well, if you count the pitch, of course. You're going to leave him out. The pitch is down low. Three balls in one strike. See what he did last year? Hit 347, 104 RBIs, 25 bombs. I mean, that's what you hope you get when you acquire a, a high price free agent which, which is exactly what Daniel Murphy was. And I think he gave the Nationals last year some more power than they thought they were going to get. Christian Arroyo over by the seats and he reaches in and makes the catch. Nice play. Interleague play starts at AT&T Park. The Twins will be in town. Friday, June 9th through the 11th. Friday's at 715 start. Saturday and Sunday, 105. SFGiants.com. Well, you find the railing when you do with your right hand, and now you just sort of brace and see if you have enough arm to get it. It's our Expo brought to you by your local Toyota dealer and a nice backhander by Kristen Arroyo. Here's Rendon hitting at 286 with nine home runs. He's got 32 runs batted in. This pitch is wide. One ball and no strikes. Matt Weeters is on deck. There's a call strike. Giants in that Atlanta series, they lost 2 0. On Friday, and then one six three on Saturday and seven one yesterday. And this pop up over the Nationals dugout, it's one and two. Only Harper, Zimmerman, and Weeders have had any history against Matt Moore in this Nationals lineup. Again, out of play. It's an amazing thing when you have a confident offense. I mean, it, it's all the way through the starting eight onto your bench. Everybody feels 
like they're going to do something big when they get in that batter's box. And that's the kind of confidence that this team has. Leads the National League in batting average as a team. Leads the league in runs scored. They mash. Get into the hole for Crawford. Long throw, and they're not going to get him. And Doan runs pretty good, so that'll be an infield hit. And that'll bring up Weeders. Did I also forget to mention they lead the league at home runs? So here's Weeders at 277 with four home runs, 17 runs batted in. Weeders has had 26 at bats against Matt Moore. On the ground into the hole and a base hit. So a couple of C9 base hits bringing Michael Taylor to the plate. Taylor at 265. No Adam Eaton. He is out for the year, so mix and match it. Who's going to play some center field? And right now it's Michael Taylor. Two sixty five. Four home runs, 13 driven in. Hits this one on the hole. Crawford kicks it. And the bases are loaded. Crawford. Well, the good news is you get ground balls if you're Matt Moore. The bad news is you're just not really finding its way to an infielder that could make a play. I think it would have been a great play had Crawford been able to come up with it to get any out. And there was no guarantee of it. Again, just to, to his right, it was an awkward play. He knew he was going to have to hurry. Could not make the exchange. So here's Roark. Roark is three hits and 15 at bats. Yeah. And two. Two high fastballs right across the letter. I think Buster Posey would like to. I, you never know. He's got four day, different pitches he could strike out. Roark right now. He doesn't have to throw a strike hit 02. So Buster Posey goes through a set of signs. And on three pitches, Roark is gone. Did not mess around with anything with the fastball. And it is the strikeout that he was pitching for. Just two high hard ones across the top of the strike zone. And then he heats him up at 93 with a little tail running away. Swing. I'm going to miss by Turner. Turner rolled out to Crawford. Think about Turner. Look at his on base percentage before the game with 277. Not a good one. The reason for it, he has not been selective. He swings at everything. And right now, head to count 0-1, you have a chance to go out of the strike zone. Hope he chases. Ooh. Not bad. Away from the target, but not bad. Definitely one that Matt Moore wanted. Take a look at what Pitch Cash says. It says, yeah, that was a strike. Change up. And again, going out of the strike zone. So here, pressure's on Posey. If you're going to call that breaking ball, Moore would want to try and bounce it. And with a runner at third, you got to be able to block it.
out of play threw him a high fastball. Rendon is at third Weeders at second and Taylor is the base runner at first a home run by Zimmerman it's one nothing and Matt Moore just trying to limit the damage. And it's going to have to hurry and they just got him and that'll end the inning. So more indeed does limit the damage after one and a half one nothing national. Join USAA in honoring our fallen heroes. And the pitch to Posey is right there for a strike in its own one. Buster at 333. His home stand, he's was 0 for 5 with three walks. There's a pitch outside for a ball. Pop up out of play. One ball and two strikes. Five for 13, three doubles for Posey against Roar. Good balance in that swing. Tight two and two. Crawford on deck. Here's the two two. Was he down the right field line and out of play? Lorak coming up with the belt. I don't think that was by design. I mean, if he's going to go up, it's usually going to be on the corner on the inside part of the plate to both righties and lefties. Three and two. I think he got away with a mistake. Movement you get if you're a sinker ball up around the belt is flat. It's more of a fade than a sink. The sink's down around the knees. And Posey strikes out for the first time in 53 at bats. Well, and he loses his bat, and he almost 
picks off Brandon Crawford. Two seam challenge. Right over the top and look at the back go. And watch Crawford as that sells almost right over his head. Heads up. So here's Crawford. Crawford at 266. And he takes a breaking ball for a strike. Crawford in that Atlanta series. Went two for 11. As he swings and misses. And he's two for 11 lifetime against Roark with both hits triples. Justin Ruggiano's on deck. And tight, not by much, two and two. So a good take by Brandon Crawford. Tapped off his foot foul, so we'll reset and do it again. Let's take a look at that last take. Watch Gorman, the umpire, just sort of turn his head. And it's just kind of let you know, no, it's a close pitch, but it's not good enough. I mean, it's something that Brian Gorman has always done. Because Rourke, I'm sure, wanted that pitch. Crawford drives in the other way. Worth on the move. Worth up against the wall and he makes the catch. Two down. Well, that's got to be a bit disheartening for Brandon Crawford because this ball was nutted with backspin. And in the end, the six foot five inch Jason Worth went up there and said, I need all of my boarding house reach. And he puts it right in the sweet spot. That's a rough at bat. Here's Ruggiano. Saw the elation with Roark. Roark, I'm sure, thought that was not coming back. Ruggiano, 208, couple of home runs, four driven in. Now falls behind 0 and 2. A lot of reach in that swing. Last fastball, 95 mile per hour. And it's our fast pitch brought to you by Xfinity, the fastest Wi Fi at home and on the go. Two and two. Christian Arroyo chalking up. He would hit if Ruggiano extends the inning. And he takes low, so it's three and two. Where's Bochi changing things up, going to the middle of the dugout? Well, that last at bat for Brandon Crawford, make you change your seat. Ruggiano, a little looper into center field, and he's got a hit. Warriors playoff coverage of the NBA final starts on NBC Sports. Bay Area game one is Thursday so you can get ready watch the team that you've been watching all season long before and after every game starting with game one Thursday at 430. Here's Christian Arroyo. And Arroyo takes down low. Here's the numbers and what's going on with Christian Arroyo. He's over his last 21 and six for his last 52. So he's due to have a monster game today. Runner goes pitches outside throw down to second and they're going to say they got him. 
And Ruggiano seems to maybe agree, maybe not. Bruce Bochy is going to have the umpires at least wait until Sean Dunstan and Chad Shop can look at it. Now, if the tag was made, it's up around the hip. He is O U T. Well, they got him, and that'll end the inning. So for the Nationals, they'll have Jason Worth to lead things off. It's one nothing. That's what they got. Him. Zimmerman's home run. It's one nothing. Here's Jason Worth who takes a call strike. It'll be Worth, Harper, and then Zimmerman. Matt Moore with pitch number 35. Here it is to Worth, and Worth jumps back out of the way. Worth popped out to Ruggiano in the first inning. Here's the pitch, swinging a bouncing ball foul. Good changeup. I mean, he's throwing some dandies today. Better changeup than we've seen the last several starts. There's a time five starts ago where he's really struggling with his mechanics and his command. But he gradually has come out of those bad mechanics into a set of good mechanics, and it's affected every pitch that he has in a positive way. And this little pop up. Is there for Belt? And that's out number one. The Memorial Day cooler bags handed out before the game. Very cool. Yep. Very cooler. Very good. Now the whole family's there. This is the guy you got to pay attention to right here. Oh yeah. Here's Harper. Harper takes low, one ball and no strikes. The pitch to Harper. There's a breaking ball for a strike. That's a good one. The guy misses with the first pitch, and he's got a good curveball. Call it again, even in a 1 0 count. Moore made the correction to get back in the strike zone. Let's see what Harper's done this season. Top ten in everything. Top five in most of it. 
goes the other way. And moving back and on the track is Williamson. Well, Giants Inside Podcast is back on NBC Sports Bay Area.com, brought to you by Max Muscle. You can log on each week as Insider Alex Pavlovich talks baseball. Giants Insider Podcast with Alex Pavlovich on NBC Sports Bay Area.com, also available on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, and Spotify. Here's Zimmerman who homered. That's right, he homered in the second inning. And just a bit outside, one ball and no strikes. That's right down the right field line. <laughs> Those are great. And they got them all there. 12, 10, 12, 14. There's a strike to Zimmerman. This is the guy who's been locked in since the first day of the yeah, season. He has never been more hot than right now in his life. The pitch one and two. And you can tell his back leg is not sitting on something soft. He was looking for gas. in the dirt. Not happy with that result. Murphy is on deck. You hate to give a hitter an easy take when you're ahead of 2 or 1 2 as a pitcher. You work hard to get ahead, then when you don't make a good teaser, you feel like you've just blown an opportunity. Got him on the outside corner, and that'll end the inning. Good looking group. And they got the right attitude. One nothing. National. The Twins are in town June 9th through the 11th and on Saturday the 10th the first 20,000 fans are going to receive a Will Clark jersey cap presented by AAA. Tickets always available at sfgiants.com. I want to get that. Saw Will Clark today coming to the ballpark. Yeah, I saw him too. He's better than two cups of coffee. And he is doing great. He'll be here in town for a while. On the ground. It hits the bag. And Arroyo is heading for two. And he's got a double. And the kid breaks that hitless streak. As I mentioned earlier, it was 
over 21. Now he's looking at one for one. Well, and not only that, but you know, he hasn't had a lot of breaks. He's hit the ball hard a lot. It's been caught here. This is exactly a good break at bat. Hitting the bag. Not a thing that Rondon could do about it. So if you're Christian Arroyo, you got to feel like that was owed to you. So here's Mac Williamson. And Mac Williamson with a swing and a miss. Well, against this terrific lineup that the Nationals have, you cash in on those leadoff doubles. So it's up to Mac Williamson, who oh. on this homestand is one for four. Oh, and two. Turn around, look to Brian Gorman. Is that last pitch a strike? The thing about Gorman, if you ask him, he'll tell you yes or no. I know a lot of umpires that no matter what you say, is that a strike? No matter where it was, it could be a two hopper, they'll say, yep. If you swung at it, it is. Three pitches. See you later. Well, he dragged it to the garden. Curveball, fastball, changeup. John Miller's here. Dave Fleming's on assignment, so I'll head over to the to the radio side here for innings four, five, and six. I actually forgot. We start packing up. Matt Moore out of play down the left field line. Yep. Little guy got the ball, and that is a good thing. <laughs> That's a moment that they will not soon forget. Matt Moore is one for 17. This would be a great time to get a second hit of the year. Remember, the outfielders on this Nationals defense, they all have good arms. So that pitch is high. Arroyo at second base is a little bit better at, than average speed. Not a blazer, but he you get a good jump. But if it's hit right at any one of these outfielders, you'll see Phil Nevin, the third base coach, put the brakes on. They all can throw. Breaking ball misses two and two. Just up and outside. Span on deck. It's one nothing. Nationals here in the bottom of the third, and there's a high foul out of play headed to the upper deck. Is it going to make it? Yes, it does. You think she thought she was going to go to baseball today? Nope. She is psyched. Game of Bibs. Enjoying the afternoon. On the ground to third. And Doan has it. He swings it across the diamond. Pretty good at bat for that one. Yeah. See a lot of pitches, put it in play. So Span, Span can save the day. He struck out in the first inning. Then Art Span should know Tanner Roark pretty well. Oh yeah, chance to play behind him in center field, so he knows what the movement on his stuff is. Inside corner, and he gets the call. I don't think Span was buying it. I think he thought it was a little bit high and a little bit inside. And that pitch is high with panic on deck. It's one ball and one strike. 
you mentioned that Roark can span teammates. One thing that Roark is doing is he's making span weight in that batter's box. Span has a reputation as being one of the more deliberate hitters getting into a batter's box. And there was a time when he was the slowest in all of baseball, and it wasn't even close. And that's when he was with the Nationals. This pop up should end the inning. And it does. John Miller will be in. I'll see you back here in the seventh. It's 1 0 Nationals. Baseball on NBC Sports Bay Area is brought to you by Kelly Moore Paint. Go where the pros go. Kelly Moore, the painter's paint store. Well, we're ahead to the top of the fourth inning. It is 1 0 Nationals. And now joining us in the booth, we welcome John Miller. Kahuna, welcome. And uh, the pitchers have both looked pretty good early on. Matt Moore had a little uh, bad luck after he gave up a long home run to. Zimmerman starting the second and then the next three hitters all hit ground balls into the hole between third and short and all three of them reached. So they had a little uh, magic wand do action going there. Two of them were uh, scored as hits and uh, and one of them was scored as an error which I thought was a pretty tough call on Brandon Crawford. Here's Murphy leading it off and uh, Murphy takes a, a called strike. What's your assessment of of what you've seen from Moore so far today. Well I, this is the first time we've seen him this early in the ball game where he's had a command of his changeup and his curveball. Usually it's his fastball and cutter which are the, the, the two pitches that he has control of most early. That is foul hit hard but foul. But today really he's had a nice changeup and curveball combination so he's basically had all four pitches working so uh, I like what I see. And uh, as we welcome John Miller. Uh, but you know I mean they. If you're Matt Moore, you have to establish your your pitches when you're facing the best offense in the National League, and that is the Nationals. And Bruce Bochy thinks maybe in all of Major League Baseball, in both leagues, that's how good this lineup is. And that's off the outside. Two and two, the count to Daniel Murphy. Nationals are just a little bit under. Six runs a game. Best batting average, on base percentage, power, speed, they got it all. A oh, high fly ball into center. The former Nat span, and there's one away. But you know, 
it's like anything else. When you know you're going into a, a Lions game, and that certainly is the case when you're facing the offense of the Nationals, you know you need to get a rhythm early. You can't go out there and, and not be committed to any of your pitches because they'll just make you pay. And that's the type of offense they have. And it's pretty much from the first spot in the lineup all the way through the eighth spot. They could bring some bang. Here's another one of those bangers. Anthony Rendon. Rendon, a former first round draft choice out of Rice University. Th these guys are big, too. The, he's six feet, one inch tall. He's the shortest guy in the lineup. I mean, that's a big ball player. 6 1, that's a tall hitter. The catcher is 6 5, Matt Wieters. And that's down and away, so it's 2 0 oh now to Rendon. Jason Worth, 6 5. And Zimmerman, close to 6 4. So Taylor, the center field, is 6 4. Brandon Belt going down the line. And can't get to it. That's just too far down the line. And Ruggiano couldn't get to it either. Well, he also had to contend with the visitors mound down in the visitors bullpen. My mommy and daddy are my heroes. Well, yes, they are. Why didn't we get our kids shirts like that? <laughs> <laughs> what were we thinking? We had our chance. But it is a day when we honor our heroes and remember them. Two and one the count. And that is foul. The most sacred of our national holidays, Memorial Day. And we'll remember the men and women who have fallen defending our great country. And there was a great celebration uh, before the game. There's a Coast Guard cutter out on the bay right now. Going by. Two and two the count to Rendon. Knocked down by Arroyo, but it got by him. Man, that ball just was scorched right near him and took that in between hop. He did well just to get the glove on it. So Rendon is aboard with one out, and here is Matt Wieters. Base hit all the way. That had some flame on it. Wieters hit a ground ball that just barely made it between third and short for a single. His first time. Six five. That's tall for a, a catcher. Get a tall catcher like that. I mean, it's hard to get a combination with a tall catcher. To, the guy can catch the low pitch and be a good blocker. He can either be one or the other. Did he swing? No. Mike Demuro on appeal, the first base umpire said no swing. Well, Matt Moore thought he swung. <laughs> Buster Posey thought he swung. Come on. Yeah. That should count for something, right? Why don't you why don't you ask around a little bit before you make that call? <laughs> Come on, Brian. Two and oh the count now. One to nothing. The Nationals lead the Giants here in the fourth inning. Michael Taylor is on deck. Weeders good numbers lifetime against Moore. Ten for twenty seven with a couple of home runs. However, in those twenty seven at bats, Moore struck him out nine times. That's a foul out of play. I don't know if Weeters knew Matt Moore when he had a cutter. Weeters played a long time in the American League with Baltimore in the same division with Tampa, where Matt Moore came up. So they faced off a lot of Americans. But when he was with the Rays, Matt Moore didn't have the cut fastball. That's something he learned here in San Francisco. Two and one the count. Way outside, three and one. Weeder is a first-round draft choice. He was drafted as the top catcher in the draft. He was the fifth overall draft choice of the Orioles, and uh, uh, that was the year before Buster Posey ended up being the first-round draft choice of the Giants as the top catcher coming out. And back to the bag is Rendon. Weeder 6'5. You talk about tall catchers. Uh, Tom Haller, who was a catcher for the Giants back in the 60s. Hatch. And he was 6'5. 
Had a lot of power, left handed hitter. Popped up. Arroyo and Crawford. And Arroyo called for it. So Crawford said, Yeah, kid, go, go get it. Let me take a let me take a few moments off here. Usually a tie goes with the gold glover. But uh, it looked to me like Christian Royal very committed on that effort. Not to be denied. So two down here is Michael Taylor. He reached on what was scored as an error. How, what was your uh, thought on that error charge to Crawford way I, over into the hole at the short. I thought it was a bad call. I think it's going to get changed eventually. Uh, at least I hope that. I mean, I if it stays, that'll be the second error of the year for Crawford. Because I was wondering, well, which which guy on which one of those runners did he think he was going to throw out? It was not a normal play. Taylor, a fast runner, and he's got it picked off. Belt, panic, now Belt, and Crawford, and he runs him down. Inning over. Joe Panic will be coming off for the Giants, then Belt and Posey when we return. They broadcast the Giants and PGD, big supporters of the military, and partnering now with Sentinels of Freedom. It's a na nationwide nonprofit organization helping severely injured veterans. And joining me today is Kyle Garcia and Mary King. And Kyle, you served in the Marine Corps. And can you tell us a little bit about how you benefit from, from Sentinels of Freedom? Sure. Well, Sentinels of Freedom is an organization that assists severely wounded veterans uh, transitioning from the military to back into civilian life. and. Uh, they assist with providing resources and uh, mentoring and assisting and securing things like uh, internships. Like I did an internship with PG&E and uh, professional development to integrate back into the community and uh, be a contributing uh, member of the community. Very important stuff. And Mary, you're the VP of Human Resources for PGD and also an Army veteran. And can you expand a little bit on how PGD and Sentinels of Freedom help Bay Area veterans in particular? Thanks, yeah. Well, we such an opportunity to partner with the Sentinels of Freedom. We've worked with them on veterans resource centers and community colleges. We've looked at their interns, tried to find jobs, supported the program for a long time. It's just, from PG&E's perspective, you think about our Giants want to play at AT&T Park because you have a home field advantage. How can we give our veterans that same home field advantage when they come home to the Bay? So I'm really proud of the work that PG&E does with the Sentinels of Freedom. Well, it is a wonderful program, and Kyle is too humble to brag, so I'm going to brag for him. Gentlemen, Kyle attending law school in August. We wish you the best. Dwayne and Mike. Dwayne's over on the radio side now, but uh, that's okay. I'll, I'll take it for him. Well, good report, ABG, and uh, 
Good luck, Kyle and Mary. That's that's good stuff, A to G. Amer the gamer. There's Kyle and Mary. Good luck in law school, by the way. Brandon Belt struck out his first time, and this time base hit. And that's the second hit for the Giants against Roark. And Buster Posey will come up. Buster struck out his first time. We talk about the style of pitcher that Tanner Roark is. He's a sinker ball guy, and that means movement coming into Posey. And Posey's natural swing, the inside out approach, that's the best swing to combat a sinker. So this is really a good natural mat matchup, Posey against Roark. Just off the outside, ball one. Buster has had a long week, but uh, once he's faced a pitcher in a game, Mike, he's has had the most success after that in his second time up in the same game, hitting just under 500. This is his second appearance against Roark in this game. Well, and I think that tells you a lot about the intelligence of the hitters, the type of adjustments that he can make within a game within a bat you look at all five of those guys that are on that list and they're all cerebral hitters they're all good thinkers in that batter's box I love that stat it really tells you a lot about the, the guy and how he adjusts with what he sees after the first at bat and has a plan the second at bat got the high strike there and it's two and one Kind of a gray, dreary day here so far. And uh, I, I, I keep having this feeling if the Giants score once or twice, that the sun will break through. What do you think? Well, yeah, and they'll get this crowd into the game, too. One nothing, Washington leading. And ball three to Buster Posey. Brandon Crawford is on deck. I know you're going to have a good crowd in this ballpark every night. And really, it's so important for the offense to get the crowd into the game. Because that energizes the team. It excites the team. Zimmerman on the bag at first with Belt the runner. The second baseman, Murphy way over toward the middle as Belt runs. And that is all for Belt. Well, with, Con with Tanner Roark, I mean, he's a sinker ball guy. He puts a lot of balls on the ground, and you can understand what Bochy's thinking. I'm going to put a runner in play here. I got a 3-1 count. I got a good contact hitter. You're never going to get a great jump in that situation. You have to make sure that that pitcher's going to go home before you break. But you're really counting on a strike. You're really counting on contact. And once Buster Posey swung through that, Bell had no chance. Well, now Buster walks. All right, right now it's time for McDonald's True Stories, May 29th of 2010 against the Diamondbacks. And that's when Buster Posey made his season debut, went three for four with three singles, and oh yeah, by the way, he had three RBIs. Posey batted six and played first base. Posey was hitting 349 in 47 games at Fresno, the AAA team he was on before his call-up. And guess what he did the next day? He also had three hits, and that's our McDonald's True Stories. And he ended up being the rookie of the year. The Giants won the World Series in his rookie season. The, the legend of Buster Posey began. <laughs> really has been legendary what he's done. And now he's 30. Three World Series rings, rookie of the year, MVP. He was a batting champion one of those years. Just an all-round bitching guy. I mean, you know. Gold Glove catcher last year, which is not easy to do in a league that Yadier Molina plays in. The ball and a strike now. That's a good changeup right there. Roark hasn't thrown any changeups. Crawford hit one really hard, 101 miles an hour off the bat that sent Jason Worth all the way to the wall, and he had to leap to catch it.
Posey back to the back. Jacks had three hits against Roark. Roark has really been great against right handed hitters this year. Is that a cooler or a hat? I think he's figured it out. I think it go, you can, it's, it's multi purpose. Not that press with that effort. Left field. And Worth. Plenty of room for this one. One hit, one walk. One man left. The Giants are trailing one to nothing. On to the fifth. NBC Sports Bay Area is brought to you by California's Great America. New for 2017, Red, White and Brews, a hometown celebration of Americana food and fun. Select May 27th through 29th and June 3rd through 4th. Packed house here at AT&T Park on Memorial Day 2017. The Nationals lead the Giants one to nothing as we start the fifth inning. The eighth place hitter, Michael Taylor at the plate. Matt Moore on the mound and there's ball one. Taylor was at the plate when Rendon got picked off to end the fourth inning. There's uh, somebody paying tribute. And Memorial Day back into the second deck. Heads up. Everybody's okay. We had a guy kind of making a play. And that will go back out of play again. Look at this. There's always something going on out there in the COVID, isn't there? Well, the Gamer Babes from Half Moon Bay have showed up. Well, happy birthday. Crawford over to his left. He's got a fast runner going here. And scooped out by Brandon Bell. One away. Adam Eaton was a big acquisition in the offseason by the Nationals to, to play center field and be their leadoff man. And uh, he's hurt. So Taylor is the guy filling in for him. And Taylor got hot after he went out there. But he's 0 for 2 in this game officially against Moore. And here's Roark, and that's a called strike. Well, Matt Moore has pitched well. Coming into this game, 2.57 ERA in this ballpark. So, not so surprising to see him off to a good start in this game. He's allowed just the one run. That was on Zimmerman's home run in the second inning. And it has been really shocking 
how different the Giants pitchers have been here versus on the road. And that's strike two. I mean we're used to seeing the Giants pitchers pitch better here. This is a, a an excellent place in which to pitch. But the the difference has never been so stark in my memory. That home run by Zimmerman Roark into right field and there is Ruggiano and he's got it for the out the Giants have are today playing their 25th game at home that home run was the 14th that they've allowed in 25 home games on the road they've allowed 37 home runs three times more than they've allowed at home it's that is it's just stunning it is in there Rotation ERA is just over two. I mean, a lot of amazing numbers. And remember, the Giants did not start off well at home. In their first 15 games, they went six and nine. And however, the last nine games, they've gone seven and two. So they're getting some offensive support to support the, uh, the pitching that they had here in this yard. It is a great place to pitch, but they are very comfortable as a group pitching in this ballpark. 5.42 team earned run average on the road. And well under three here at home. Now it's one and two to Trey Turner, who has gone over two in this game. Last year he came up. Oh, there's a Kuko fan. True heart. <laughs> right back to Moore. And that's a three up, three down inning. The Giants with Ruggiano, Arroyo, and Williamson coming up, trailing 1-0. NBC Sports Bay Area is brought to you by Toyota, the full-line automaker with the longest-lasting vehicles in America. Toyota, let's go places. Giants trailing 1-0 as we go to the last of the fifth inning. Justin Ruggiano leads off and takes ball one from Tanner Roark. I'm John Miller with Mike Kruko. Dwayne Kuyper is over on the radio side. He'll be back come the seventh inning. And it's 1-1. One one. Roark hit a single to center. Sort of a uh, very profound topspin liner. And uh, this went back into the second deck. One ball, two strikes. One of three hits the Giants have had against Roark so far. Christian Arroyo is on deck. Two and two. 
Night games here tomorrow. And again Wednesday night. Jeff Samarja goes tomorrow against Gio Gonzalez, the left hander. And Wednesday, Matt Kane, Max Scherzer will match up. Also 715 Wednesday. Then the Giants will hit the road. They won't be back home again until a week from Friday. When the Minnesota Twins come to town. The little interleague interlude for the Giants at home when they get back is Bob Garner and Kane look on. And muscles this one. Shallow outfield. That's gonna fall. Base hit. He's done that a couple of times now. When the Giants get home a week from Friday, that weekend will be play ball weekend. On Saturday and Sunday, the 10th and the 11th, day games both. The first 5,000 fans 14 and under will receive a play ball, bat, and ball set on Sunday, June the 11th. Tickets always available at sfgiants.com. Now, will we get that? The bat and ball set? You want one? I'm going to get you one. <laughs> I want it. I want to get that. I want to get that. I want to get that. Off the fist foul by Arroyo, who hit a double his first time. Right down the third base side, he hit the bag. Yep, souvenir. He earned it. Quite a bit. And Ruggiano dives safely back to the bag. Ruggiano had that hit in the second with two down. Then with Arroyo batting, he got thrown out trying to steal to end the inning. Giants are 0 for 2 trying to steal so far in this game. Although I think both both cases were actually hit and run plays where the batter swung and missed. One and one to count. Hey, the family's here. She's got her Will Clark uh, eye black patches on. She says, I'm in. <laughs> well said. Sun trying to break through the overcast here. And a pop up down the right field line. Zimmerman in foul ground. And that's one away. Catcher at heart. This is not her first game. Very comfortable in this. Well, on Dad's lap. At the yard. <laughs> Mac Williamson now, who struck out his first time. And it's 0 1. He is not having any fun right now. Now, that's four pitches he's seen from Roark. He's seen a breaking ball, fastball, a changeup in his first at bat. It was a three pitch see ya. And then here he opens up the at bat with another changeup. And it has been a lot of swing and miss with Mac Williamson against Roark. A ball and a strike. I mean, nothing unnerves a hitter more than swinging and missing. And when you've seen four pitches and you got four swing and misses, it's time to step out and have a little conversation with yourself. Nunez was in the original lineup today. Well, that was a real pitcher's strike right at the knees, right on the outside. And it's one of two. Nunez was being examined today. When I chatted with Bruce Bochy a couple hours before the game, he was being examined by the doctors for Concussion. He had this, some symptoms of concussion. That's very high. Two and two. And they brought Orlando Caliste up today from Sacramento. And he was allowed you when you have a player who's undergoing the protocols for whether or not he should go on the concussion disabled list, you can bring a 26 guy up who can take batting practice and fielding practice and whatnot with the rest of the team in case you end up needing to. Uh, Put him on the roster and put the the player in question on the concussion disabled list, but they did not make a move today. So Nunez not in the lineup though, and that's where Williamson came in. Two and two the count. It was the play yesterday when Nunez was at third base and it was a wild pitch and he came in and scored, but the throw to 
home and hit him in the helmet. And that's the one that has caused the discomfort, the queasiness. He had a little bit of, he seemed to be dazed, and they all were questioning him about it when he got back to the dugout after he scored that run yesterday. But uh, he convinced Dave Grester that he was fine and was not concussed. And he played the rest of the game and had a good game. But then uh, started having some uh, blurred vision last night. And that's the second straight time now that Williamson has struck out in that changeup. Well, here's the play we're talking about. All right, Dickey, the knuckleballer on the hill. Now, Kurt Suzuki throws a little underhand flip and it hits the top of the helmet. It actually goes off the helmet of Nunez and hits the head of Dickey, the pitcher. Matt Moore, the hitter. And there is Worth. Right near the warning track. Hit well by Matt Moore, but the inning is over. One hit, one left, onto the sixth inning. Worth, Bryce Harper, Zimmerman coming up. is presented by the authority of the San Francisco Giants and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of San Francisco Giants Baseball Club, LLC. Well, on Friday, June 9th, the first 20,000 fans are going to receive a Buster Hugs blanket presented by Toyota. So join us at the Giants take on the Twins Friday, June 9th through Sunday, June 11th. It's always available at sfgiants.com. I want to get that. I want to get that. I want to get that. So that's the night when the Giants get home from the road trip. They're going to Philadelphia and then Milwaukee for seven games. After this series with the Nationals is finished. But we're ahead of ourselves there. The, it, this series is just beginning. Game one. One nothing Nationals. And Jason Worth takes a strike. Veteran, 38 years old now, Jason Worth. And he's having an excellent year. 379 on base percent. He's got seven home runs. Still pretty decent in the outfield. Stays in great shape. Well, the on base percentage is really what this guy has always given. He keeps the line moving. The ball is hit well deep into center field. Span at the warning track. Squares up. One away. And let's check in with Amy G. Hey, John, I know that it's you now. I'm glad I'm on the same page. Christian Arroyo snapping an 0 for 21 skid this game. No coincidence. He's been working with Bam Bam Mullins and Steve Decker and 
Will Clark. Of course, he wears Will's number, and the two have known each other for a very long time. Will's been working with him since he was playing low A ball. Christian said about him, he knows him not only as a hitter, but as a human. He's so great about going back to basics, and he's very easy to talk to and to connect with. He said the best thing about Will, he doesn't overcoach. He just gives you enough to figure it out. Gentlemen. Here's Bryce Harper. Thanks to Amy Gutierrez. And that's that's a pretty good way to put it. Well, I think that really is the genius of Will Clark. I mean, that, that was his approach when he was a hitter. I mean, he had a lot of common sense um, approaches that he would take in the batter's box and, and corrections. They just, you know, they made sense. One ball, one strike to uh, Bryce Harper. Yeah, you know, there are certain guys that I really think are, are made to teach when they leave the game as a player. Will Clark is one of them. I mean, he connects with a player. He doesn't overcoach. He doesn't give him something he can't handle. The curveball is fouled back to the screen. Bryce Harper, who he's, he's only 24 years old, first round drafter. He was the number one selection and you know, the first player in the entire draft back in 2010. And it did not take him long to get here. He was still he was 19 years old when he broke into the big leagues. Back to the screen. And comparing him with Barry Bonds you know, when Bonds first came up Chris Bonds came in out of college. And uh, but you're talking about the all time home run champion. And Bonds had the, the stolen bases at the same number of games. Otherwise Harper more homers more RBI's better batting average. And that ball is in the dirt and it's two and two. And Harper his his numbers might even be better than that. He has been in four all star games already. But he has never hit well in this ballpark. This has been the worst park for him as a hitter. He's now 10 for 53 0 for 2 today. Hitting about 190 lifetime in AT&T Park. Just missing outside. Well, I mean, those are stats that I would never hesitate to put him in the lineup with uh, if you're <laughs> Dusty Baker because he's so explosive. And he's the type of guy that can hurt you with just one swing and can be the difference in the ball game. I mean, he really is. He's got better every year in the league, with the exception of last year, where he kind of set back because of injuries. But I mean, he's just a solid hitter, and, and he's going to get better. And Harper, and you, and you know that because he's only 24. Harper came into this game hitting 337 for the year. He got eight. Home runs out of the 15 total with two strikes more than anybody else in all of Major League Baseball this year. Down the left field line toward the corner and into the crowd. It's a good matchup right here. Got a guy there on the mound who's got a pretty good feel all four or five pitches today. You got a guy in the batter's box who's got a pretty good command of his bat head with power, even in two strike counts. And yeah, they're getting after each other. That one back into the lower deck. Still three and two. Bryce Harper. In 2014 in the division series when the Giants pulled off the huge upset nobody nobody other than Giants fans favored the Giants in that series I thought that was a lopsided series the Giants won it but Harper got hot and down he goes on a strikeout and he is 0 for 3 against Matt Moore here's a home run he hit in Washington in game one against Hunter Strickland. That was power on power right there. And then he got him here. Again, power on power. And he wanted up putting it in McCovey Cove. He's <laughs> <laughs> wound a little tight. <laughs> 
That is foul off the bat of Zimmerman, who homered his first time, the only run of the game up till now. Remember, Strickland. Strickland got angry at every guy who hit a home run against him in that postseason. Yeah, well, I mean, he was, that was his first year. He was, I mean, he was. He was a total rookie who looked so impressive in September. The Giants said, "Well, let's keep him on for the postseason." Just off the glove of Arroyo, you can't believe he didn't catch that one. He started looking at his gloves. Something defective here? Is there a hole in my glove? What? Well, he's not happy about it. You can see the reaction. Let's take a look. I mean, he had good timing to it. He just didn't have enough arm length. That's not one you can really get mad at your glove for. Just right off the, the fingertips of the glove. So here is Daniel Murphy, who has fouled out to third and flied out to center. Zimmerman aboard. Zimmerman, he's he's been hurt, and we haven't really seen the real Ryan Zimmerman for a few years now. This was a first round draft choice and a local guy to the University of Virginia back in 05. And when he got to the big leagues, he looked like he was. Ready to become a great player, and he had some out outstanding early years. But then the the injuries started mounting up. Well, he's healthy right now, and Zimmerman's having a monster first third of the season. Murphy, who is 0 for 2 in the count, one ball and no strikes. Ryan Zimmerman, and I think Nationals fans are so excited about it because he's a very popular guy and is. Been with the Nationals for a long time now. Local guy has made good. Zimmerman is not much of a threat to steal a base. And that's a foul right over toward the on deck circle where Anthony Rendon is awaiting his turn here. Two down in the inning. Runner at first. Still have to make him stop. I mean, you can't just ignore a guy. You see a guy who's got average speed or a little below it. You kind of think to yourself, oh, I don't have to pay too much attention to him. Wrong. That's something that every pitcher learns the hard way. And Zimmerman does have a steal this year, just to sort of prove your point. That ball is hit well, deep, and it is off the bricks. Zimmerman's going to be waved, and. Uh, Williamson overthrows the, uh, overthrows his cutoff man. That was his shot. If there was going to be a shot, he hit that. Uh, and I said uh, Williamson, that is Ruggiano. I beg your pardon, Ruggiano in right field today. Williamson in left field. And uh, Ruggiano overthrew his cutoff man, his relay man. Well, with two outs, you know Zimmerman's going to get a good jump, and I thought that Ruggiano played this pretty well. But here's the mistake. He throws just a little bit over the head of Joe Panic. Now, if he hits Joe Panic, Joe Panic's got a good arm. And they have a chance to get Zimmerman, Zimmerman but just too high for Panic to make a, a catch with. And once it got over his head, it was an easy score for Zimmerman. The Nationals had two down, nobody on, and got this thing going with a single by Zimmerman, and now the double by Murphy. And it is 2 0. And here is Rendon. Another one of their big RBI producers. Rendon has knocked in 32 runs this year. 27 of them since the end of April. Tied for the most in the majors since then. Well, didn't he have like nine or ten of them in one day? Ten of them in one game. Three was it three homers, ten RBIs in one game. That'll get you well in the stat sheet. Truly one of the great games of all time. All time. <laughs> I mean, 10 RBIs. That's a great week. That is a great week. And you have all that in one day? Come on. Going back is Span, but he squares up now. And don't retire. But the Nationals. <laughs> Start something out of nothing here with two down and nobody on and get a run. They lead two nothing.
Chrysler Sports Bay Area is brought to you by the all-new 2017 Chrysler Pacifica. By AAA. Get a free Giants welcome mat. Go to AAA.com slash Giants or to a AAA branch for details. By Southwest. Yes to low fares with nothing to hide. That's transparency. By Jack in the Box. Come try the new sweet or spicy barbecue bacon cheeseburger and chicken sandwich. Limited time only. And by Heffernan Insurance Brokers. Insurance and financial services for you and your business. Visit HeffIns.com. Denard Span leads off for the Giants, the former Washington National. And uh, he and the Giants trailing now 2 0. Tanner Roark starts him with a called strike. I think this is a big at bat when you get uh, a chance to lead off with your leadoff hitter when you're down in a ball game late. I mean, this is a big at bat. If you can get on base, you can really bring some momentum to that Giants dugout. 0 oh 2. He went down, appeared to go down out of the strike zone chasing that one. You know when you're getting shut out I mean you're, you're not generating a lot of energy you're not getting the fans in the game but it doesn't take much to ignite your dugout the stadium but I do believe that this is a key at bat right here here comes Harper one away all right, time now for our smart play. It's brought to you by your California Ford dealers. And we go back to the 2014 NLDS game four with the game tied 2 2 in the bottom of the seventh. Joe Panic scored on a wild pitch by Aaron Barrett. It proved to be the winning run, and the Giants would win that series three games to one. Exciting, exciting days back in 2014, October. Giants won that best of five series, three games to one. Joe Panic has flied out to left and grounded out to second. And the flags indicate wind blowing out. Ball down the right field line. It is foul. The, arc, the Giants had the some lefties stacked up at the top of the batting order. But Span is 0 for 3. Panic is 0 for 2. Belt 1 for 2. So only one hit seven trips to the plate for the lefties at the top of the Giants batting order. Giants have only four hits total. There's Murphy two down. And here comes Brandon Bell down by two the Giants need get only one man on base to send the possible tying run to the plate. Dwayne Kuyper will be moving back over from the KNBR radio booth for the seventh inning. The Giants trailing 2 0 here to the Nationals. It could be a very frustrating, frustrating day when you're facing a, a sinker ball and you're trailing because you have a lot of quick outs. Sinker ball is sewed up there. You put the ball on the ground, somebody makes a play, and all of a sudden, first thing you know, boom, six pitches later, you're, there's two outs on the board. Hard to be patient. That is a base hit over the stacked up defense. And that's two hits for Bell, and it makes Buster Posey the possible tying run. Buster was so hot for a long period of time, and then he got cooled off in Chicago. He was two for 12 at Wrigley Field. And has not yet had a hit on this homestand. Two for his last 18 today has struck out and walked. And he's gone 53 consecutive at bats without striking out until the second inning today. That's a base hit. Belt will hold it second as Worth gets it back in. Take a look at. A little hanger. They cut a fastball at 90 middle end, and Posey says, "Yeah, I like that one. Kind of a top spin liner. I haven't seen him been hit a lot of top spin liners of late. I mean, he's guy does that. He's got a little bit of an uppercut going. 
It's hit the top of the ball. So here's Brandon Crawford. Now Crawford has hit the ball hard twice. Once to left field that sent Worth all the way back to the wall for a leaping catch. The other one that sent it back near the warning track. Two on, two out. One, one. Yeah, first pitch changeup. You think back to the last at bat that Crawford had against Roark. Started him off then with a changeup, and he had a swing and miss and a quick roll one. You see Roark use that changeup a lot today. It's been a good pitch for him. Giants trailing 2 nothing. Two men on, two men out. Look out. One ball, one strike. But good, good location on that pitch. He had advantage of the count 0 and 1, and he threw a cut fastball that had movement coming into the left handed hitter. Whereas most of what you expect to see when you face Rorak hit from the left side is movement running away with that sinker. So that pitch sets up this one. And the ground ball. Murphy's got it. And the Giants go down. Dwayne Kuyper will be back here in the TV side for the seventh inning. Two nothing, Washington. Game summary is brought to you by your local Toyota dealer and it has been a good old fashioned pitching duel between two good uh, pitchers. Matt Moore through six, six hits allowed, a couple earned runs, three strikeouts. Tanner Rock, however, a bit better with no runs allowed, one walk, five strikeouts, both right around the 90 pitch level. And that is our Toyota game summary brought to you by your local Toyota dealer. Top of the seventh, two nothing Nationals. And once again, here's Dwayne Kuyper. And it'll be. Weeders to lead things off and a swing and a miss. No balls in one strike. Weeders is one for two. Then Michael Taylor and then Tanner Roark. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. Nothing in two. Both teams with six hits. Got him on three pitches. The cutter down and in, locked him up. I mean, really, this is the best that Matt Moore has been in about a month with command of all of his pitches. He's really had a good feel with everything he's throwing. And this is exactly where he wants to put this cutter. And a nice stick there by Buster Posey as he frames that. I mean, that, that's a strikeout your catcher gets us for you. Here's Taylor. Taylor puts a high fly ball center field. Wind is not helping balls of center or right as that's 
out number two. And here's Roark. Hank Greenwald stopped by today. It was great to see him. Hank is like Carla. Carla. What, 80, 82. 82. He's an old teammate of mine, Dale Hanson. Although he was not as good a dresser back when we were playing together at Cal Poly. That is a good changeup, and that is something that Matt Moore had in the second pitch of this game. And he got him, and that's five strikeouts for Matt Moore. Well, Matt Moore has given up a couple of runs, a home run in the second, and then a two out run in the sixth, and a single and a double by Murphy. And uh, on this Memorial Day, in front of this huge Memorial Day crowd on this Monday afternoon. And uh, let's listen to Renell Brooks Moon. Giants are proud to once again participate in the national moment of remembrance as we pause to honor the brave men and women who made the ultimate sacrifice in service to our country. Please join us now in this moment of silence as a collective unified expression of gratitude to the heroes who lost their lives while protecting the freedoms we enjoy today. Thank you, everyone, and please remain standing. Here now to perform God Bless America, please welcome back United States Air Force Senior Airman Michelle Doolittle. God bless America. Today, on this Memorial Day, USAA honors our fallen heroes.
It's back. Jack's taking on the Nationals tomorrow, 7 p.m. game, pregame live at 6 p.m. You can see it right here on NBC Sports Bay Area. Come out and watch the pregame show live from Willie Mays Plaza. The first 500 fans are going to get a cheer card and an authentic Giants fan fold-up blanket. Giveaway start at 5 p.m. Ruggiano, two for two. Let off the fifth with a base hit. Roark with pitch number 94. And a strike. One ball and one strike. This is the Tanner Roark. We remember. Oh, he's been nasty today. On the ground slowly to Turner. RBI baseball 2017 returns with fast pace pick up and play MLB action packed with all your favorite MLB teams players ballparks and much more get RBI baseball today for PlayStation and mobile devices you can learn more RBI game the kids her daughter Grace those are her kids her son Zach Here's Arroyo Yep, great looking kids. And we aren't shocked by that at all. Well, we expect that from A to G. Our son Zach, 12 years old, and he is a load. It's going to be a tall young man. Strike to Arroyo, it's nothing in two. Maybe G's daughter Grace, a dancer. Paul did not have anything to do with those two good looking kids. <laughs> Paul Gutierrez, a distinguished writer here in the Bay Area. One two pitch. Here it is to Arroyo in tight two and two. Good family, a lot of fun. And the two two pitch to Arroyo. Is out of play. Some of the hardest and greatest horse laughs we've had have been with Amy G. Yep. She brings a good attitude into this ballpark every day. She is so much fun to be around. Foul back. It stays at two and two. Good swing. Play again. How about those Padres? How'd the wacky, wacky pods do? Well, they just wiped out a two nothing lead. The Cubs had. It's now four two San Diego. In tight, and it almost hit him, and it did. That's a rally. Indeed it is. It puts Roark into his stretch. Mac Williamson is going to be pinch hit for. Just grazed uh, the front of his uniform. So if you have to get hit by a pitch, that's kind of a good way to do it. So Bruce Bochy said, you know what, I'm not going to let this game in without having this guy get in at bat. Well, and an opportunity to tie this ball game up. Michael Morrison, former Washington National. Good years with the Nationals. My goodness. Yeah, he really did. I mean, you go back and look at 2011 when Michael Morris hit 303 with 31 home runs and 95 RBIs as a Washington National. And he did all that in 522 at bats, which, you know, I mean, usually you're going to get a, a hundred more or so, but in that year he was in. in Rare form all year. And he's had good numbers against Roar. Two for three lifetime. Well, he won't get cheated, that's for sure. 103 pitches for Roar. And 
first pitch strike and it's no balls in one strike. Royal with his lead with one out. We're in the seventh. Swing and a miss. Nothing in two. It's one of the best sliders that Roar can show today. Take a look at the explosive movement. I mean, that's how you want to pitch a look. Make it look like it's going to be a strike and then just crash out of the strike zone. And it's high, so it's one and two. Hunter Renfro hit a grand slam, and that's how the Padres got their runs. That game being played in San Diego? In San Diego. One and two. That foul, so Morris stays alive. It's amazing that Morris can reach that pick. I guess when you get long long arms like he does you can do that good numbers as a career pitch hitter 283 with three big flies I mean that, that's you're an asset if you could bring those numbers in as a pitch hitter two and two Aaron Hills on deck. He would be hitting for Matt Moore. Got him. Two outs. Take a look at the power changeup. Talked about how good that pitch has been for him. Here he gets strike three. Hill coming up with two outs. And he takes outside for a ball. See what his numbers are as a pinch hitter. Very good. Swing. I'm going to miss. One ball and one strike. An arts fan would love to hit. I feel straight away for Aaron Hill. And he pops this one up. It'll be Harper or Murphy or Zimmerman. Who's it going to be? And it'll be Murphy, and that'll end the inning. Through seven. Guys, I have a new pitcher. It's 2 0 National.
Papa Ray Ratto, Kelly Johnson. They're going to bring you the happy hour on NBC Sports Bay Area and NBC Sports Bay Area.com. Also available to listen to live and as a podcast on NBC Sports Bay Area.com. When it's time for a change, think speedy. Oil change and auto service, your trusted oil change tune up and smog experts. So Hunter Strickland, the new pitcher for Bruce Bochy, 21st time he's coming in. He's had a good first half, one and one with a 1 0 6 ERA, 18 strikeouts in 17 innings. Some high velocity fastballs. Span. One out. Let's check in with Amy G. Amy. All right, gentlemen. Well, it is time for our Giants in the Community Spotlight. It is brought to you by PG&E and the Giants sponsoring the 39th annual Carnival Parade. It happened yesterday. The theme, the heart of San Francisco, Lucille, the G team and kids from Mission YMCA Junior Giants flew the heart of San Francisco victory flag and display the 2014 World Series trophy. A lot of fun had by all. Gentlemen. It looks like it. So here's Worth. And Worth looks at a strike and it's no balls in one strike. Belton left. Moore set first. Worth is 0 for 3. And it's down low. All right, time now for our Togo's big play, the Togo's way, and uh, we're going to give it to Jason Worth, who took extra bases away from Brandon Crawford. That shot was hit the left field in the second inning. And that's our Togo's big play. One and one to Worth. Worth pops this one up, and it's going to be out of play. The eight mile an hour fastball. Hey, the, the guy on deck should be fun at bat, shouldn't it? Well, they've met before. Strickland and uh, Harper. Did I see you guys over when I was on the radio side showing a couple of highlights about that? Yes, you did. With them yelling at each other? Uh, well, <laughs> remember back in 2014, Hunter Strickland just got called up, and he was feisty. He was a bit feisty. And he slowed the combat down a little bit. Rookies. You never quite know what you're going to get. But they will meet again here shortly. I'm looking forward to it. 2 2 pitch. Here it is. High and deep. Down the left field line. Fair foul. It is. Foul. Well, it had the distance. And how foul was it? Just a foul. Hmm. Two balls, two strikes. And the pitch to Worth. Just outside, it's three and two. Well, that, that's a great pitch. That's a 97 mile an hour cutter. And I, you, you throw a pitch like this, you think, how could this guy take this in a two strike situation? Is his eye that good, or was he just looking for something else? He couldn't hit it. Down the right field line and out of play. Worth does have a good eye. He's always yeah, he does. had a good eye as a hitter. He'll get pitches out of you. Which really explains why he's always had a good on base percentage. I mean, he'll take a walk. Oliver Perez getting ready to go. Sean Kelly, the right hander. Thinking about Buster Posey. Hit on the ground. Hannock on the backhand. Nice play. Got him. That is the big leagues. And there's nothing nasty as you're going to slide into a backhand when it comes up to you, and to be able to, to wrestle this down from the high backhand position, I mean, it's just a great hands. Well, that ball was called a top spin liner. And 
That is a gold glove play from a gold glove player. So here's Harper. Harper's 0 for 3. And the pitch, and he hits Harper. And Harper's going to go out. And now we got a beef. And this is a good one, folks. This is as good as it's going to get for a while. Uh, we got more people coming in throwing. Michael Morris has taken up, keeping Worth out of the pile. And it's still going. Now yeah, well, it's Strickland that they're trying to calm down. I mean, it, there's three guys, four guys trying their best to hold him up, and he's yelling, "Let me go! Let me go!" And now Mac Williamson's got him around the leg, and I think that's going to be where it stops. And they're doing the right thing, get him off the field. He is out of control right now. It's going to be interesting to see how many guys get kicked out of this game because there was a lot that was the punches that were thrown. That is a Donnybrook. That was not a push and shove. There were some blows thrown in this one. Gets him right in the hip, and as Harper comes out, watch him take his helmet out, and he starts to throw it. It slips out. A couple of good punches thrown there. And then Samarja comes into the pile. And you got some big folks down there on the infield. Well, now the umpire's got to try to straighten this out. And you know what that was? That was just an I don't like you pitch. That's it. That's all it was. I don't like you. And it's likely I'm probably never going to like you unless we're teammates. Now it's going to take a while to sort this out. There were some players of both clubs that were kicked out and I haven't seen one like this in a long time so Pantos is going to be the one that's going to come out and pitch and that's a direct hit I mean that ball hit him right in the leg and it bounced right out towards third base and look at Samarja coming in trying to protect I think you saw that Harper may have had a free shot with Strickland down on the ground, so he was going to try to help. Michael Morris coming in. There's a collision right there. Michael Morris and Jeff Samarja. Daniel Murphy right in there. Roark. Williamson. Now Rondon comes in from behind. So the dust is settled that we think. But again, I mean there were some big boys out there throwing some wood. And it was more than just a push and shove. Tell you what, I mean Harper's gonna have a bruise. That hit him direct. 
Anytime time you see that ball hit a player and come out towards the field that that's a direct hit. Well I'm just glad it hit him there and not someplace else. I mean if you go above that then you got a real big problem. Yeah this is game one of this series folks. Well this two outs and nobody on this was a baseball game after that it became a hockey game. Brian Gorman the crew chief I mean we haven't been alerted as to who's still left in this game. Give you another look from center field. The biggest collision was Michael Morris and Jeff Samarja. And watch him come into it. Now Bumgarner can't. He's got to get out. He's got to disable this. You can't go on the field. I saw somebody from the Nationals. I couldn't tell a number, but he came into the fray. Here's the collision we're talking about Samarja and Morse. You know, you you watch Buster Posey, and you know what he's worried about. Because this is where they were trying to calm down Strickland, and he was just he couldn't you, you couldn't calm him down. Now he was in the go mode. Mac Williamson did the smart thing, but I was talking about Buster. He always always in the front part of his mind is his ankle. He does not want to get his ankle. Stepped on and boy you talk about getting stepped on in those things. You get stepped on you get rolled on. Sometimes the least thing that can happen is you get punched. I think that's the most fun that Jeff Samar just had in a while. I mean he's used to dog piles in the middle of the field. Being an ex football player. But you're right when you get that much weight. Being thrown around and, and, and somebody could twist a knee and ankle and oh, reach it back. So we're going to get Contos into the game when it's time for a change. Think speedy oil change and auto service. Your trusted oil change tune up and smog experts. So we'll get that out of the way as Contos is ready to go. So one more look. If he tried to throw the helmet at him and slipped out, there was a jab there from. Strickland and both guys exchanged more blows and watch the collision from Morris and Samarja. And then everybody's starting to fall down. It looked maybe that Daniel Murphy may have twisted a knee when he went down. And then you don't know where they're coming from. No, you don't. So Contos to Zimmerman. So Brian Goodwin in to pinch run now for Bryce Harper. Swing and a miss. It's nothing in two. Now here's the, the problem. You, you get a Donnie Brook like that where you got a lot of this flying it doesn't end here it goes to the league office it gets watched and rewatched and then the fines come and then the suspensions come and that's the problem I don't blame Harper at all for going out not one bit but he got hit hard no balls and two strikes we haven't seen the end of this. It's not going to stop here. Down low, one and two. This is game one. And this is 98 mile an hour fastball, and it hits him, and it comes straight down the third base line. That's a direct hit. By the way, Zimmerman's had a nice day. He's two for three. So 
Goodwin at first with two outs. We're in the top of the eighth inning. And Zimmerman's going to have another hit as he pokes one into center field. See, that's one of the more violent brawls that we've seen in a while. Well, look, if people around the country don't know the history like like we do, they might think, well, why, what's going on? Well, it goes back a couple of years. <laughs> this is just another chapter. This book is still getting written. Murphy is one for three. And the pitch is outside for a ball. One ball and no strikes. But Hunter Strickland's a big man. I mean, he's 6'4, about 235, maybe more. And he swelled up. He got even well, bigger. Harper's no little guy. No, I mean, there's two big fellas going at each other. Murphy takes high again, two and oh. Murphy doubled in the second run. For the Nationals in the sixth inning, and he did it with two outs. There's a strike, two balls and one strike. Well, one thing, the Giants offensively have not been able to get this crowd into the game. That got this crowd into the game. Everybody in this ballpark was standing up when both benches empty. You need a shutdown inning here, however, it's three and one. That's a base hit. So coming in to score is Goodwin. And it's now three to nothing. So Murphy with his second hit. And here's Rendon. Rendon is a couple of hits. Eight hits now for the Nationals. Strike and it's no balls in one strike. And pitches up one ball in one strike. On deck is Matt Weeders. And a pop up. And it's going to be Crawford shading his eyes, and he'll put it away, and that'll end the inning. Three nothing, National.
teacher brought to you by Provident Credit Union is here. It's the 11th season of the program. And it is put on by NBC Sports Bay Area All-Star. Uh, and it recognizes teacher make, teachers make a difference. So you can vote at NBCSportsBayArea.com slash AST. And the winner will receive $20,000 for his or her school. When it's time for a change thing, Speedy Oil Change and Auto Service, your trusted oil change tune-up and smog experts. There's Oliver Perez as he's facing Denard Span. Okay. And a curveball for a call strike. Perez basically a two pitch guy as you see Brian Goodwin stays in the game. He's in right field now. Perez fastball that can go a uh, little bit 90s more lows than mids. And that slurvy slider from the low three quarter release. One ball and one strike. The Giants need some base runners. It's three nothing. And the little pop up that should reach the seats and it does it's one ball and two strikes. So only two players got ejected. Harper and Strickland. It's the first career ejection for Strickland. It's the ninth career ejection for Harper. But as I said I don't believe it's over. And you know I mean, when your best hitter Harper gets hit. If you're Dusty Baker and you're the Washington Nationals. You want payback, and the guy you want to get is the Giants' best player. Foul back. It's one and two. So, Buster Posey. I mean, it is definitely going to be in the back of your mind, and not just this series. Remember, the Giants go to Washington as well. So this incident today is far from over, as we mentioned. It's just another chapter in a book. Span on the ground to third, and there's Rendon. One out. Span is 0 for 4 today, and here's Panic. Panic is popped out to left and he's bounced out twice. Seattle beat the Rockies today in an interleague game in Denver 6 5 the final in that one. Panic takes a strike. Kind of a low scoring game for a day game in Colorado. 6 5. Outside to Joe Panic. Belt on deck. Sean Kelly awaiting. Swinging a foul back. One and two. If the inning gets to Buster Posey, you're going to see Kelly in the game. Dusty Baker, you can see his strategy with the three left hander hitters span, panic, and Belt bringing in one of his two left handers. He's got his bullpen, Oliver Perez. Breaking ball, two and two. It's tough for a lefty when a left hander drops down and throws that big sweeping breaking ball. That's a good pitch. When we first saw Oliver Perez, he's a starter. But he has really found a nice home in the bullpen. And the 2 2 pitch to panic is high, 3 and 2. Perez, 35 years old, is a 13 year veteran. He's been he all over the place. Doesn't, doesn't look to me like he's going to be slowing down anytime soon. And the walk. That's good at that. 
And you're right, Oliver Perez has been around. Signed in 1999, been with the Padres, the Pirates, the Mets, the Mariners, the D-backs, the Astros, and now here in Washington. I remember him more so with the Mets than anybody. So here's Belt. Belt is two for three. Swing. You ain't gonna miss. No balls in one strike. I mean, look, he's 35. That last pitch at 94. So I would say that he's not slowing down at all. No. And when you can bring that type of velocity, that type of a, of a break with that low three quarter release, high side arm, you, know, you could go a while. Up and in, one ball and one strike. Panic with his lead. Swing and a miss. One and two. And belt out swinging. And that'll bring up Buster Posey. So belt strikes out. So Dusty Baker bringing in a new pitcher. It's three nothing. We'll be back. This season, you can stream every NBC Sports Bay Area Giants broadcast on your desktop or mobile device. Giants game stream on the NBC Sports app. So, Sean Kelly is the new pitcher. He'll be facing Buster Posey. Sean Kelly's numbers through 16 games, 3 and 1. He has three saves, 18 strikeouts, and 13 and 2 thirds. Got good stuff. You're going to see a low to mid 90s fastball and a hard slider. Interesting, righties hit better against him than lefties are. And in 13 innings, he's given up six home runs. That's a lot. Buster's one for two, single and a walk. Crawford's on deck. And a fastball high, one ball and no strikes. Nationals three Giants nothing here in the eighth. Two and zero. Oh. You know a fight like we saw today. I mean, it, 
you really have to wait 24 hours to see just exactly how much damage there is. And Buster Posey with a base hit. Well, that's going to get Crawford the tie and run to the plate. A panic walk and a Posey hit. Crawford's 0 for 3. So Crawford who has power stands in and now timeout is called. See the troubles that the Nationals bullpen has had. Swing and a foul. That really got Brian Gorman knocked his mask off. The foul tip go up and hit Gorman right in the forehead. Hey, the mask did what it was supposed to do. Did his job. Oh, and two right across the letters. Dakota Glover, closer for the Nationals. Mike Lassie, the Giants closer. Get greased up. High to Crawford, one and two. Ruggiano on deck. We're in the eighth. And the pitch. And this pop up is out of play. Get in on the hands of Crawford. So a battle. Kelly, Crawford. One and two. Hit up the middle. Off the leg of Kelly. The bases are loaded. Ball hit well with Trey Turner, the shortstop, shading over towards second base. I don't know if it would have been able to get through the infield. I mean, as well as it was hit, it may have. But you can see the shortstop, Turner. No, I think that would have got up. And into center field. That, that right there hitting the leg of Kelly cost Brandon Crawford an RBI. He'll have to settle for an infield single. As hard as that was hit, nobody was going to get to that one. So the Nationals catch a break. And Ruggiano, who's never faced Kelly before, is going to step up with the bases loaded. And two outs. Nice two strike at bat from Crawford. And that was the one you wanted, and that was the one he got. Little 90s fastball, middle in just above the knee. Two. So in two pitches, Kelly has shown Ruggiano what he's got. I mean, that's it. One or the other. Fall back. Another pitch that was right where you hope you get. 
Foul straight back. I mean, he was tied to it. And I don't think that's what Kelly wanted to throw that pitch in an 0-2 count. One and two. Easy take. Left field, Worth, and that'll end the inning. The Giants leave him loaded. It remains 3 0. Giants baseball for Easter and Giants post game live. You get highlights, reaction analysis, and it's for a full hour right after the game. So Contos is going to face Weeders. It's 3 0 Washington. Weeders is one for three. And the pitch, and it's outside the Weeders. One ball and no strikes. On deck is Michael Taylor, and then Kelly, the pitcher. Two balls and no strikes. Got those staying away, away. Needs to throw a strike right here. He does. Two balls and one strike. More Strickland Contos. Get on the ground to panic. One out. So the shift paying dividends. Here's Taylor. Taylor is 0 for 3.
Big swing and a miss. No balls in one strike. Both teams with eight hits. And that's tap foul. Stephen Drew is on deck, who was just activated today. For the Giants in the ninth inning, the bottom of the ninth, they'll have the bottom three in their lineup, and it'll be Arroyo who's going to lead things off. Low to Michael Taylor. It's one ball and two strikes. And he got him with a high fastball. 0 for 4 for Taylor. Not above the hands. Set an outside target, but it wanted to be a pretty good mistake going up above the hands in that one two count. See Posey looking away and winds up going right up above the hands. Well, winds up being perfect. So Drew is the pinch hitter hitting at 222. Takes a bit wide. One ball and no strikes. Top of the order. Trey Turner's on deck. Guys have done a good job of controlling the top of the the Nationals lineup. They're not allowed to hit to the first three hitters. 0 for 11 until Harper was hit. But the guy hitting cleanup is the one that's hurt him, and that's Zimmerman. Two balls and a strike to Stephen Drew. Two and two. We learned about Steven Drew. It's time in the National League West. He likes that ball down and in. That's where his power zone is. Tonto staying away. It's three balls and two strikes. Staying away from the hot zone. About down and in, it's three and two. You know, when a guy's got a hot zone, I mean, you're aware of it. I mean, you get the big leagues, you play against a guy for a long time, and that zone's always there. Then he retires, you see him eight years later in an old timers game, and that zone is still there. Just avoid forever. If, if forever. That does not change. Three two pitch. So Bruce Bochy is going to make a change. When it's time for a change, think speedy oil change and auto service. Your trusted oil change tune up and smog experts. We'll be back.
going to try to get the last out here in the top of the ninth inning. Numbers for Corey Guerin, really the only blemish that the walks. The 14 walks against 14 strikeouts in 1983. At times, and he's had problems controlling that high side arm sinker. He'll give it to you in low 90s with velocity. He's got a slur. But he is a guy that can get you a ground ball. He is a guy that really is at his best when he has knee high command. Joe Ross just snuck into the game to pinch run at first. There's Joe Ross. He's a starting pitcher, so. So here's Turner. Turner. Not how many pitches Turner has taken today, but he is a free swinger. He hacks. Has not met a pitch that he will not swing at. Oh, goodness. What a grip. Aaron takes a lot of time as he breaks this slider late. One ball and one strike. Definitely one of the slowest once he gets set to deliver a pitch. One and two. Good slider. But when he, he commands the knees, his stuff just comes to life. The Prince talking over with Dave Gresner, John said trainer, Brian Morris. Remember, he was trying to hold back Hunter Strickland. Hunter well, Strickland had like five guys on it. Uh, All teammates. Hunter Strickland, of course, he's on a DL and he went out. I think Bum didn't go out because of his situation health wise. A smart move on his part. This Buckler trying to recuperate from a separated shoulder. Tapped to Arroyo. He's going to have to hurry. And a nice play, and they just got him. Over five for Turner. Giants coming up. James saying speedy oil change and auto service your trusted oil change tune-up and smog expert. So Coda Glover now has inherited the role of closer for this Washington national team. They've really had some problems in that pin sorting things out. Take a look at how he's earned his way. 14 base runners at 15 to the third with 13 strikeouts against a couple of walks. He's got great stuff. 
I mean, just a straight fastball. He can go mid to high 90s with, but you're going to see a lot of cutters and a lot of sliders. It'll be Christian Arroyo to lead things off. And he takes a pitch high, one ball and no strikes. Morris. And then a pinch hitter. And that'll even the count. Glover to the plate. Swing and a miss. One and two. And that's a pitch that he's never seen. Didn't even know he had. And you can hear about it until you actually see a guy's breaking ball. You really don't have a book. But now you do. That's true. Just be happy you saw it in a one strike situation, not a two strike situation. Foul out of play. And once you see it one time, you know, you're kind of on board. Trying to get on here to get something going in the night. Got him. Cutter and a good one. Yeah, we're going back to 1980 when Dave Winfield charged Mike Kruko. Mike just kind of waited and waited and then the block. See, we've seen Muhammad Ali do that a lot. <laughs> well, Barry Foot from behind kind of uh, saving a butt kick that I was probably sure to take from Dave Winfield. Was that Lenny Randall? It was. And Di Venus, Turner, he gets up and throws and they got him. Nice play. That is a big league play. When you have an 0 for 5 going, as Turner has, you're going to try and take away hits from somebody else, and he just did take one away from Michael Morse. They played him to pull, a one hopper, spears it. He knows he's got time because he knows Morse is running. And that, folks, is the big leagues. And for Michael Morse, it's a big league hang with him. Here's Nick Hunley. Unleave. Coming off the bench is a pinch hitter here in the ninth with two outs. And he takes a strike. And a good curveball. Now he's got four good pitches. When you get into a, a closer situation, I mean, you don't always feel like you need to throw all four. But it's in his skill set. One and two. See a lot of those. That's a low 90s cut. Finally gets a piece to stay alive. Rally cap time indeed. Span to follow should Hunley reach. And it's high, it's two and two. That's the ball game. So game one in this three game series, it goes to the Nationals. And a really strong performance by Matt Moore, but uh, even better than that was Tanner Roark. 
who is going to now be six and one lifetime against the Giants. So both starters were very good. Well, they really were, and it's a tough game to lose if you're if you're Matt Moore. And then for Matt Moore, I mean, he had all of his pitches going today. So it goes to the Nationals, but hey, we saw a fight today that uh, I'm sure is going to have an effect on every game for the rest of the season between these two teams. Well, this was going to be an interesting series with or without a fight today, but uh, you're right. The rest of the way should be fun. Final score Nationals 3, Giants nothing. Stay tuned. Insurance Giants postgame live starts right now. <laughs> 